Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we're going to be looking at something I've been really looking forward to. This is the Height Q60 Thick AIO. Now this has got a five inch screen on it, bigger than any that I've seen on the market. And you've also got a thicker radiator in place of a longer one. So in theory, you should be able to get some temperatures that will match the performance of a 360 mm AIO, but on a smaller form factor, they've just gone for a thicker boy instead of a long boy. There's some really cool things you could do in the software, which we'll also look at. You have got a 60 hertz screen on this, so you could do GIFs, for example. And then we've also got a dual pump and also failovers as well. So if one dies, the other will take over. First of all, I love the box. I love how colorful it is. I also love the thick branding that they're going with. It's certainly more of like a meme than um, other companies that just do a professional thing. I think it's fun and something different. I've also got the FP12 additional fan pack that you probably noticed in the intro, just if we wanted to do a build with it. I have got the Y70 on the way, so we could maybe put that in there and have a look at that all together. I will show this in the system at the end though, so you can see how it looks in a nice built up rig. So opening it up, we have got a rip for thick. There's a little height logo up there as well. So unlike traditional thing, it's just a cover or a piece of cardboard. We've actually got some paper that we need to take off. So we'll just do a nice little score through that and get into it. And here we go. So we've got little sections for this to actually bring out a little bag for all of our accessories while it looks at things. We've got an instruction manual that's tucked down the side and then the AIO itself. Let's try and take this all out. So let's look at the accessories before we get onto the actual AIO. So they do mention the manual just to look at that if there's any extra bits you need to know about. So inside we've got the screws. These look like they're gonna be necessary for either AMD or Intel. Some screws to mount into your system. And we've got a cable, they're using USB-C on the end, which I think is really cool. Then that goes to a six pin PCI for power. We're seeing a lot of those on the like Lee and the Unifans, for example, and they use the same power method. And we've also got USB 2 and there's also a four pin header for PWM. So then we've got AMD kit, so AM5 and AM4. So inside a couple of brackets that you'll swap out and then you've got your AM4, AM5 standoffs. And then the Intel kit I'm expecting to look very similar different height and things, for example. Then it will also have a back plate because Intel boards don't come with one. So yeah, there we go. There's our back plate. This will support anything from 11.5X, LGA 1200, LGA 1700. There's the standoffs for those. Then you've also got the 11.5X 1200. And also some spaces for the older sockets. Also worth mentioning, you can use this on Threadripper. Just need to contact height and then they'll send out the bracket for you. Radiator, God, look how thick that is. So that's 52 millimeters thick. Then we have got 30 mil fans as well, which are obviously going to push more air. These are zero to 3000 RPM. One thing I am not concerned about, but curious about is how loud these fans go, because obviously we have got a much denser radiator than the standard thickness, which is 28 mil. And we're going to have to push these fans a lot harder to be able to push the air through. So that's something we'll of course talk about in the conclusion. If we just turn this over, you can see we've currently got the fan frame visible for the fans here. So that's currently set to pull through the radiator. You'd have it on maybe the front of the case or the side of the case if you're using the dual chamber. It's gonna pull in that fresh air through the radiator and then carry on through the case. Just taking those screws out so I can actually remove the fans. These are really strong magnetic daisy chainable fans. So just taking that off, you can see the pogo pins that are on there and then the contacts on the other side of the fan. Then at the bottom of the radiator, we have got those pogo pins again. So they're set like this as default, but you can easily just turn it round and then connect it back up and it will still have all the power that it needs. At the bottom of the radiator or at the top, depending on the way you orientate it, you have got where you're gonna connect your cables, those USB-C ports that I mentioned. Sometimes it can be quite tricky to hide that four pin PWM cable. So to have it on the top of this or at the bottom is a really nice touch. It's gonna to be really out of the way and obviously you can hide it a lot easier too. So the cable's key to it, letting go in one way. And that will just connect in like that. I did see another USB port there. Maybe you can use some additional fans and daisy chains through this one. So the dual pumps that I mentioned, we have got one on this side and then there's one on the other side. Like I said, they have got the failover. So I think that's a really nice thing that you've got some peace of mind that if one pump will fail, it will swap over to the other one. Now let's go to the business end. Underneath here, we have got some pre-applied thermal paste, a nice little touch. And then turning this over and undoing this, we have got that five inch screen that I mentioned. So like I mentioned, five inch display, ultra slim IPS. It's a 720 by 1280 resolution, 60 Hertz refresh rate, and you've also got 300 nits of brightness. So it's gonna be nice and vivid. You've also got some illumination and RGB in the back as well. So I'll shine onto your motherboard. Just taking off the cover for the hoses, really nice dense weave on there. You can't see anything through that. I'm sure they're using black cables underneath anyway, but a really nice hose, very flexible too. So I'm gonna to put it into the case in the kind of recommended spec, and then we'll have the fans on 
here like they were before. So they'll be all ready to rock. Other little things to touch upon, you can rotate the screen so you can get it in that optimal position to view things. The fans can push a massive 105.8 CFM of airflow with a 8.14 millimeter H2O static pressure. Very high performance fans. I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform on this, like I said before, if they're loud or not too. You can support up to 34 devices over two channels. So I expect we'll see things like RGB hubs and different things you can integrate in Daisy Chain in the future. So that should be pretty cool. Then last little things, six year warranty. So generally see a three with an AIO, so really nice. Obviously you can see the height, trust their products. And then the last thing is the price. It's currently 299, obviously gonna be expensive. You have got a five inch screen. And then the closest competitor to this is gonna be the Ryogen 3, but that is currently 339 smaller screen and then that's a 360 slightly thicker rad i think it's a 32 mil for rad um, over the standard 28 but that's going to be the closest rival in terms of performance too so i'm looking forward to seeing how they compare if we would like to see a full breakdown one versus the other then that's something i can do so do let me know but for now i'm going to get this into my system and get it tested so onto the height nexus software the first thing you're going to see is a little welcome screen when you have some different performance options the first one you change your polling rate, the output resolution of the screen that's on the AIO, then lastly your frame rate. Increasing these can affect the performance of your PC, so I'd recommend going a little bit lower if you're running a lower tier system. Now this is the main landing page you'll see for the Nexus software once you've completed the setup. There's lots of different options here, but firstly we're going to look at what the AIO cooling can do. The first thing you can see is the flat curve that I had set for the fans when I was doing my testing, set to 53%. You can just click on the, the flat curve and then drag it to the item that you want it to affect. So for example, I did the fans. You can also drag it to the pumps if you'd rather. Now, if I was to add a linear curve, I can pick the temperature that that will set from and then the speed that it picks as well. You could also add one if you want it to really ramp in the higher degrees of temperatures. Then on the left-hand side, you can pick the source of where it's going to pull that temperature from. Most people will use the core temperature of their CPU. You then just drag from the core to the performance curve, then just drag from the curve to the products that you want it to affect. So in this case, the fans. Deleting that curve, we now have our nice performance graph set. So as the temperatures rise, the fan speeds will also increase as well. You can also add some other temperatures on there as well. So for example, if you had some case fans and you wanted them to ramp up when your graphics card gets warmer, you can also do that there as well. So moving on to the screen, first of all, we've got the gallery for the video background. So the background of what will display on the screen. There's a lot of different preset options here, but you could obviously have something custom if you'd rather. For the lighting options, this is what will display from the rear of the screen and then project onto your motherboard. I found this to be a little bit complicated, but obviously this is something that you'll understand more the longer you spend with it. I just ended up going for the default RGB wave for mine just to keep things simple, but of course you can customize it to how you'd like. You can take different options from like the desktop, for example, or if you've got some media playing, you can use that as a basis to then project the lighting onto your motherboard. But the lighting aspect is certainly one of those things that can be a little bit complex. For the screen options, you can read from different stats from parts that are in your system, for example, your graphics card temperature, RPMs of certain fans. You've then got a few different options on how you want to display that. You can, of course, change the color and the background and all things like that for the text as well. So you can really give it a nice customized feel. You've also got media options on there as well. So for example, if you went to YouTube and found the music video, it will display that album's artwork and title. There are some other options such as AIO default. So for example, the hardware settings that this will follow should you not have the software open and other things such as setting the fans for PWM if you just want to fit and forget. So onto the conclusion. First of all, I've put this into the O11 Vision, which we would have seen a little bit of in the software. This was an all white system that I put together for a review, but it made sense to put it in this as it's also mostly white as well. So first let's talk about the installation and then we'll get into the temperatures. I found it to be fairly easy. The fans are already pre-installed, so that's one less thing you have to do. And then the LGA 1700 backplate I found to be a little bit strange. In the manual, it reads like you need to add on additional spaces, but you don't, they are pre-installed, just to save you from looking for a packet that doesn't exist. The standoffs can be a little bit tricky to install, especially if you've got a chunky cooler around your motherboard VRM. Something that you're more than likely gonna have, given this is a 300 plus pound cooler, you're unlikely to be using this on a 65 watt TDP processor, unless you feel that you need the screen, for example. They could do with some of the six-sided standoffs as well, then you can easily install them with a bit screwdriver like an iFixit kit, something that I regularly do myself. Although the hoses on this area feel pretty flexible once outside the case, once you start screwing in the radiator, it does quickly stiffen up. So I recommend that you hold the AIO in and get your hoses as you want them first, as it's quite tricky to manage them after. There's no option to control the orientation of the screen in the software either, so you can't just rotate it. It must be installed in this specific way. You'll probably find that your hoses will sit on your graphics card as well. Just a little thing that might annoy some people. There's also very limited rotation on the block end. 
some rotation fittings maybe up by the radiator end might make it a little bit user friendly especially for certain cases where you are limited for space the screen it might just be my one but it does seem a little bit look like wobbly it can also catch on the hoses depending on how you've mounted it my test system i found a lot of that and it was quite difficult to get a nice position to actually view it as well before we talk more about the fitment and limitations though i'll cover the temperatures off I tested this with the Intel 12900K to really put some heat through it. The same system that I also tested the Ryzen 3 on as well, so it's quite interesting to see how it performs with more thickness against the length that you got from the standard 360. It's slightly thicker rad on the Ryzen though. As usual, I kept all the fans at 1600 RPM to keep things fair. So all my runs, I hit a maximum of 100 degrees though, so thermal throttling. Removing the ambient temperature for a doubter does make it a little bit better, but we're still throttling at this level. I do use Cinebench though, and that's a synthetic benchmark, so real world temperatures might be a little bit lower. If, for example, if I was to take the average and remove the ambient, we'd get about a 15 degree cooler temperature. But in order to compare it, I do need to take the high temperature, otherwise we're gonna get inconsistent data. So as you can see, warmer side of the coolers that I've tested doesn't quite cut it as a replacement for a 360 unless you really ramp the speed and accept more noise, as obviously they've got to push a lot more air through that thick rad. The fans though can get very loud, let me just give you a sound sample. So very loud, even being behind the system, let alone in front of it. So it's something that you're not going to want to use all of the time. Now at Computex, Height did announce a 360 version, which was music to my ears, as that could be the ultimate cooler. There's also a version without the screen to save a little bit more money. So especially good for those people that are just interested in the performance too. Hopefully we'll be able to get those uh, to look at in due course because I'll be really interested to see what kind of temps we can get out of those. Now on the topic of compatibility, let's talk about the restrictions that you're going to get with this cooler. I'm using the O11 Vision and it's just the case that I had the white parts in. But to make it work, I had to vertically mount the GPU. If I was to do it horizontally, it would in interfere with the AIO. Of course, you could get away with it in this case if you used a smaller card, but this is a 4070 and there are a few more higher performing cards on the market that you might want to use with a showcase style chassis. So they're likely to be bigger cards than I'm using here anyway. Even vertical mounting the screen that's resting on the card shroud and then also the power connector is right between the hoses. Depending on the card you're going to be using, that might be right in the way. So in this case, the further along the connector on the card, the better. Ideally, Height would like you to use one of their cases with it. It will fit perfectly in the Y70, but not everyone likes that style of case. Another point with the fans, when they use the magnetic connector, you can't use them in a push configuration very easily. For example, you could put the fans on the other side of the radiator mount and then like sandwich them together. For example, a standard case, you could replace the fans that come in the front and then put the radiator on the other side. Or if you're going to use a dual chamber style case, which I feel most people will go for, you could have the fans on the other side of the mount, which will reduce the depth that you need inside, potentially opening up some longer graphics card options. A little cable maybe to bridge the gap might be a nice little thing to include that you can just connect onto the two ends of the pogo pins. As it is, I say this AI would work for most CPUs bar the top SKUs. You might be okay with the 7950X, but the 3900, 4900K are very hot. And unless you want the fans ramping all the time, like you're seeing, can get very loud. At the moment, it doesn't replace a 360 AI. Now this or the Ryogen 3, a question that I expect a lot of people are wondering. Not the answer that I expected to give when I first unboxed this, but I'd actually pick the Ryogen 3 over this. However, my focus, especially on if I'm using a higher end CPU, is performance. So if you're all about the five inch display uh, on your motherboard, then obviously this is perfectly adequate, but the Ryogen is still a cracking cooler. A lot easier to work with as well, especially as all you need to know is if your case can take a 360 AIO or not. The downside, you do have a smaller screen with a lower resolution and you will need to use Armory Crate, but it's not too bad. This, I think, though, has been a great first attempt from height. The screen is very nice. You've got a lot of customization there. You can spend a lot of time getting it how you want it. And it's nice that it's all matched with a massive six-year warranty as well. Pretty much twice what you see on most IOs. There are a few little kinks to iron out, and hopefully the ones that we saw shown at Computex were just prototypes and there's still time to tweak them a little bit. I'm looking forward to those, though, the 360 to see if we can take the top cooling spot and also the screenless options for something that's a lot more affordable to really bring the price down where we can get that into a nice budget build. So any other questions, then please leave them down below and I'll get back to you. I'll leave the links for this in the description if you want to pick one up. Thank you all for watching. A big thanks to Hypesense out for you to look at and I'll see you all in the next one.